Our next presenter uh, is uh, Christian Bolivar Moya. Uh, Christian is a serious affiliated uh, postdoctoral researcher in the Purdue University Mathematic Mathematics Department. Christian, good afternoon. The floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Are you seeing my screen? Looks good, well, Christian. Okay, awesome. So, uh, hi, uh, my name is Christian Moya. Um, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Department of Mathematics at Purdue University. Uh, today, I'm gonna present some of our research uh, about uh, machine learning based methods that we are trying to use to protect the power grid from cyber attacks. Okay, so, uh, the power grid is a very large, a very nonlinear, very complex non uh, system that has seen a lot of uh, deployment of information and communication technology, which uh, has created more interconnection, interconnection between the IT network, uh, the control network, the SCAN network, for example, and the OT network, the physical system. And this transforms the power grid into a cyber physical system, uh, the, which is ambition to improve the reliability and operation of the grid. However, it also increases the risk of cyber attacks, especially cyber attacks that uh, aim to create some energy delivery disruption. Moreover, and as the grid uh, becomes um, um, more interconnected and uh, operates in a more distributed fashion, uh, the attack surface, uh, the, number of, uh, the, the number of components that an adversary can attack is increasing. These attack surfaces widening. So the risk is even, even more uh, as the grid progresses to a more distributed operation. And cyber attacks are not theoretical, as we know from the attack against the Ukrainian power grid. Uh, here, uh, uh, the adversaries uh, um, reach the uh, distributed management system from the IT network. They use phishing emails, they uh, use lateral movements until they reach the, their target, which was. The SCADA system. They took control of the SCADA, they opened some breakers, and uh, uh, they created outages that affected more than 200,000 customers. If something like this will happen in the US, uh, this will cost billions and it will affect many of the critical infrastructure. So, in our research, uh, our focus is on machine learning and learning based solutions for dynamical systems, and we're particularly interested in power grids. Uh, we have developed prediction methods, uncertainty quantification. Uh, we're looking at control and decision making. And we know that we could use most of them for like providing cybersecurity solutions at the OT level. Um, and in particular, we are interested in uh, stopping coordinated control attacks. The attack against the Ukrainian power grid was a coordinated control attack. Uh, by coordinated, we mean the manipulation of multiple power grid devices in order to jeopardize the power grid operation. In the figure that you're seeing there, for example, we are assuming the adversary has reached uh, the SCADA system of generator owners and transmission owners operators. And they are ready to either operate the, the, the generators, they're gonna disrupt the, the, the power output of the generators, or they're gonna open a transmission line, like what happened in the, in the Ukraine. Uh, this is not a new problem. In fact, uh, the power community has studied this problem before. Um, they, for example, have assumed that the adversary could potentially operate many generators or logs, and they use the steady state uh, tools to predict whether this, uh, this manipulation, this adversarial manipulation, will reach to a point where the power flows in the system uh, we're, we're, are going to be higher than the ratings, and these will treat them, the protections which could trigger also cascading failure and blackouts. Uh, they usually use steady state approaches. So uh, in, in, in particular, they use the part, what, what is known as the power flow equation. Another, another, uh, another topic that has been studied a lot, for example, by ABB is that what happens when the adversary opens circuit break is like what happened in the Ukrainian power grid. Is there a way we can stop this? Uh, these usually create large disturbances in the grid. And uh, these could potentially be very catastrophic. So uh, our goal in our, in our research is actually to predict whether uh, the consequences of these attacks. Uh, and, uh, and we assume that all these adversaries, uh, their goal is to disrupt the power grid operations. So their goal is in the physical space. 
uh, even though they had to traverse over the cyberspace in order to reach this goal. So we, we have developed several methods um, and how to stop these coordinated attacks. For example, we, we, I'm now gonna show uh, how we can screen this adver the adversarial command that comes with, uh, that will operate the generators and uh, will move the power grid to a point that's gonna disrupt. And also, uh, and this is, current, uh, this is our current work, uh, we're trying to see after an attack, whether we can predict what would be the consequence of the attack very fast, so we can create emergency control, control strategies. Uh, the first, uh, so let me explain this example. So in this example, we're assuming that, that the power grid is, uh, in, in, without an adversary, the power grid, the, the operator of the power grid is gonna operate the generators in order to follow the load. And however, in an adversarial environment, when the adversary has reached uh, the SCADA system, the adversary could also operate this, uh, could also manipulate these commands in order to disrupt the power grid operation. So the goal of the, def the defense in this case is to create a method, a digital copy of the power grid that will observe this command and will predict whether this, this is gonna create some disruption or not, right? Uh, so, but this is a very challenging problem because the power grid, uh, it operates in a non-stationary environment and the decisions are not the same uh, depending on, on, the, on the time of the year, right? If the attack happens during the summer with high load, uh, the adversary may need only a few generators to compromise in order to disrupt the power grid. But uh, in low load conditions, the adversary, the same attack may not affect the power grid. The power grid is very robust and uh, will actually ride through that attack. So uh, in order to develop a method, we need to always have to, uh, have to be able to capture the operating point the power grid is, is currently in. So in, in our work, we develop a variation learning method uh, that uh, does exactly this. This essentially uh, predicts whether these commands, this manipulation of the generation will either or will, will disrupt or not the power grid. And if we'll disrupt, we're gonna stop it. We're gonna stop that command and, 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 and we're gonna stop the command. But if, if, the, if the command is safe or is not gonna disrupt the power grid, we're gonna allow it. Uh, we, we also attach, as always, uh, some uncertainty quantification to the prediction because machine learning methods, especially, they are usually, um, they fail uh, a little bit in, in when they need to generalize to outside of what their training model, training samples were. And using this uncertainty quantification, we can combine this model with more complex methods in order to increase, uh, uh, increase the, our, our prediction capability and our performance to stop cyber attacks. Uh, some results. Uh, so essentially with uh, machine learning based methods, what, what, we, what we obtain is uh, we are usually faster. In this case with a power grid, a very large power grid of 3000 buses, uh, our method is 10 times uh, uh, less, uh, 10 times faster than the than a method that will use standard numerical methods. And in terms of performance, even though the method is a very simple linear probabilistic model, we, also, we almost reach the same capacity, the same performance of uh, the model-based method. Now, uh, what we've seen right now in what I presented before was just uh, an application of uh, when we when the adversary under small, uh, creates a small perturbations uh, of the generation. However, we, we most likely the adversaries will disrupt the power grid by creating large disturbances, which will, on the other hand, create transient responses. And we expect that these attacks are going. The goal of these attacks will be to create large disturbances. So in in our current work, what we have done is uh, we we develop a deep learning based method that after an attack observes a little bit of that trajectory using PMU measurements and then predicts uh, what would be the consequence of such attack. And this is done very fast. We will attach to this prediction uh, uncertainty quantification. So we, we will essentially uh, provide a confidence interval whether our, our prediction is correct or not. And what this allows us, and this is our current work, is that using these predictions, can we create emergency controls such, such that the power grid will ride through this attack? Uh, and this problem is extremely challenging. And in fact, standard deep learning methods, uh, they will fail with uh, trying to, to predict, try to do this kind of extrapolation. So 
uh, what we do is we use uh, a, a method called operator regression. Essentially, we we construct a mapping between the trajectories that have some information about the attack, uh, this trajectory, to uh, to a trajectory that knows a trajectory uh, of what happens after the attack. And in order to approximate this operator, we use what is called the deep nets. This is a this is a different kind of deep learning method that was uh, recently proposed by Lulu in natural in natural intelligence. And this, this deep learning method contains two uh, neural networks, one which is called branch net. The branch net takes this input, the, the input with information about the attack, and the trunk net takes uh, takes uh, takes uh, takes an, as an input something to create a base basis function such as such that we can decode the, the post attack trajectory. These deep nets have shown very good generalization. So allowing this will allow us to do ex extrapolation. They they perform very well when data is scarce, when it's expensive, like in the power grid. They allow to train with multi-fidelity kind of data. In this case, we will we will we will have data from the field, but also we can simulate uh, attack data to improve the the performance of a, of a, our deep learning method. And this is essentially a supervised method, even though we're trying to create self-supervised approaches using deep nets. Uh, we also, as, as, uh, as mentioned before, we, we attach uh, uncertainty quantification to this problem. Uh, to this end, what, what we do is we, we, we create an architecture of, a, of our deep learning method that not only predicts, uh, create, uh, pro outputs a mean prediction, but also outputs a confidence value, right, in terms of a standard deviation. And we achieve this by using a, a training function that will that will essentially uh, uh, try to always approximate with approximate the right tra trajectory using the mean prediction, but it also controls our error using the standard deviation. Our results are quite remarkable. Um, we, for example, this is a result that we tested on a 60A bus system. Uh, this is a response in one of the generators, and uh, we created a cyber attack in, in five of the transmission lines of the 68 bus system. And by observing just the first two seconds of the response after the attack, we can predict uh, the red the, the red to dash line is the prediction, is the mean prediction, but also we provide an uncertainty quantification uh, value estimate to this prediction. As you can see, our, our prediction follows very well the true, the true value, which is the blue line. And the blue line actually is within the estimate of confidence, which is what we want, right? Because whenever we do controls, we want to have the estimate in order to, uh, to, to, try, to try to control the attack. Uh, and uh, this is just an example, a pictorial example of what we have done. We, perform a, perform, we developed tests on 300 tra trajectories. And we show that our mean predictions are very good, less than 1% error, relative error with respect to the, to the standard ones. But the best, the best thing is that the, the, the confidence interval, this green interval here, contains 97% of the true trajectory in, those, in, most, in almost all our, our examples. And this allows us to conclude that our uncertainty quantification can provide enough information to create emergency control and write through attacks. In summary, uh, I have explained it, uh, a little bit about the type of attacks we're studying and trying to defend against, which are coordinated attacks. Uh, we, we describe a violation, violation learning method to stop attacks when disrupt, disrupting just a steady state operation of the power grid. We also pro propose a probabilistic deep operate, operator regression model to predict the transient response during attacks that are going to create large disturbances. And we use the ponets to approximate this, this operator. In our future work, we're going to design uh, emergency control using our predictive trajectories. Uh, we're looking at using the physics of the power system to improve our generalization and create what is called the physics informed deep operator neural networks. And you, by using also a way to, to, to using um, solutions for inverse problems plus the physics informed deep operator, operator neural networks, we're gonna construct the digital chain of a larger scale, uh, of a larger scale power grid system. And uh, in, in the future using this digital thing, we could stop these largest large disturbance attacks even before they happen. 
Uh, any questions? Wonderful. Thank you very much, Christian. Appreciate uh, your thoughts and comments. Uh, I believe as a panelist, you have the opportunity to jump in the chat and include uh, your email address or website uh, for sure. anybody who'd like to follow up with you. Uh, we will be taking a four minute break. And when we return, we will be coming back with the trusted microelectronics discussion, panel discussion. See you shortly.